another set of awards called the India Awards for Success as well. Those are creative awards. I, I saw something. I saw a set of awards, and then I said, "Okay, here is something that looks familiar." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. It's good. Very nice. It's good to be back and doing physical events as well. So you know, let's go so, yeah. right. Boss <laughs> was the first ever physical event that we did, so it will always remain etched in our memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love that other campaign also that you had uh, shown us. The whole campaign around the, you know, if you're, a, if you're thinking of a 45-year-old scientist, then. Uh, you know, which is the stereotype that sort of comes. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was uh, a nice one. Actually, we did an initiative called Voice of Change, uh, and and that was really we did a survey with the Gina Davis Institute and the UNICEF on um, the you know research of about thousand ads to see how the women are represented in the advertising. And so interesting data points came about, and then we followed up with a seminar and a webinar to discuss that. It was, uh, yeah, long long way to go, but made a made a beginning uh, start on saying that we need to do something more um, proactively on how women are represented in typical stereotypical way, including men for that matter, in our creative community. So I mean, it's it's a it's a wonderful start because uh, I, I thought that the. Uh, visuals of the ad really sort of one's yeah, yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something we followed it up with. This was very well accepted as well. So yeah. We live on all three platforms now. Oh, fantastic! Thank you, Sneha. Is okay. there a okay. sort of? We are watching. Bole paathi di. Hmm. Maro lagbe. Are we just going right now? Are we starting right now? You guys want to wait for a little bit? I think let's start at six thirty-five. Yeah, let's just wait right. for another two minutes. Yeah. So I actually wanted to ask Megha this question: Is there an equivalent for a Bechtel test of sorts for ads as well? What uh, what test? The, the test which uh, it's called Bechtel test, right? Which is the uh, uh, where uh, you know where two women if they're talking on a screen then they're either uh, you know they're talking about uh, a man they shouldn't be talking about a man they shouldn't be talking about uh, about each other or something i think there's a what was that rashmi i think rashmi rashmi was uh, 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 was was actually talking to me about it some time back it's a it's a test that is used to uh, check Uh, you know misogyny and stereotypes or something it's oh, a, it's no i don't know. i don't know about that uh, okay <laughs> I, i'm not aware I, i will find out about the exact name of the test okay okay yeah I'll... sure i think they just please put it in the chat box she has oh thank you for that they just bechtel yeah bechtel test that's the one right yes Thank you. And just tell me what the test is all about. Yeah, test. No, I'm not. I've never heard of this before. Yeah, it's. Uh... Bechtel. Bechtel is the one where you uh, have those three guidelines, uh, Mega, about you know the women whether they're talking about a man, whether they're talking among themselves. Uh, so it's really what they've been applying to. Uh, Picture films, and I think Anupma Chopra has talked about it when she's done Oh Womania. Oh, okay. So, um, but I think that's what Gina Davis is saying that you know um, mm. that doesn't really give you any data. Mm -hmm. So oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, because that's then, and also it's a bit skewed because uh, you know then it depends. It, it has a few, I would say, limitations. So. Okay. So now uh, we're later. I I won't uh, talk about it now, but there's a huge, fabulous project being done in India by the Tata Institute. So I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. 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 Fantastic. Yeah, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. This is exactly what I was looking for, and. Uh, I think Rashmi or somebody had mentioned it to me, and I was wondering that uh, even in ads, perhaps we can actually use tests like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's very popular. It's been the first and most popular, I would say, measurement tool. Right. But now I think everyone's, as Megha, you know, quote uh, said, everyone's talking about the data because people want figures. They want to know. What's that, you know? I think we should start now. Yes. Yeah. 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 A very good evening everyone and welcome to the very first session of In Focus which will cover a v- various you know sessions that will focus on film, broadcasting, journalism, advertising and a lot more. And through these sessions we hope that we'll be able to give you a glimpse into all the possibilities that exist into this domain that's usually not very well covered and a lot of us are not very well acquainted with what all goes on behind the screen. So we really hope that this entire series of session is able to, you know, make you acquainted with that. So having said that, I think we'll begin with the session. Uh, this is Gurleen Panu and I will be hosting this session with my fellow host Isha. So I currently study in my third year of undergrad. I'm pursuing computer science engineering and this field is fairly new to me as well. So I'm sure that as I will be learning here, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who are there in this meeting room who will be uh, watching for the same. Isha, over to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Isha Dandike. I am a recent graduate. I have been with Aspar for her for the past five plus months. I am also fairly new to this industry, but I'm very interested in it. I've been researching on my own and working on this vertical, being given a chance has expanded my knowledge. And I'm so grateful to it. And I hope all of you stay till the end because trust me, it's going to be a wonderful session. Now, without further ado, I request Madhura Ma'am to please introduce Aspire for her, because there's no other person who can do it better. Thank you so much, Isha. It is such a pleasure to welcome Megha formally on the Aspire for Her panel. Uh, She has been part of Aspire for Her for the past many months, and uh, we have been privileged uh, to be a part of the IAA Award Ceremony uh, where Megha is actually the serving president, and she gave us a wonderful platform to talk about the work that we were doing at Aspire for Her. So thank you for being a wonderful mentor, Megha. Thank you for being here. A warm welcome from all of us. Thank, thank you so much. Yep. Now I can. I was not being able to unmute. Thank you so much, Madhura. And thank you, Isha and Gurleen. Lovely to be part of this fabulous family. Thank you. Aspire for Her was started about 18 months back uh, when uh, I started looking at gender data emanating from India and I realized that uh, things had gotten from bad to worse in the past 15 years in terms of women's workforce participation. Uh, Less and less women were joining the workforce um, and India was sixth from the bottom in a list of 156 countries as far as women's participation in the economy was concerned. This was really concerning. And I have not had the chance to pursue uh, careers like the ones that we'll be discussing here today. I have had a fairly boring career as a banker for 25 years. And here I realized that the world was opening up and the young women in India needed to see what sort of career opportunities lay lay in front of them. And we realized that this space, the film and media vertical, and we just called it loosely the film and media vertical, it is actually much, much more than that, uh, is a wonderful space where people can explore, can dare to discover new sorts of career paths, uh, which are not really the beaten career paths which you keep seeing um, you know, in your everyday uh, uh, occasions. So that's why when Rashmi talked to us about looking at a community of students who are aspiring to follow these kinds of careers or even to uh, try to discover, try to see what sort of career opportunities lie ahead of them, we thought who better than our very own mentors to come and put this to life and uh, you know, bring this to fruition. So thank you very much to the wonderful Aspire for her team led by Ruchita, Gurleen, Isha and teams. Uh, they have worked night and day to actually put a structure to what we call the film and media vertical. 
So thank you, girls. Thank you, team. And who better than to start off this vertical than the one and only Megha Tata. So we are delighted to kick this off. This is a part of our career preview series. And this is a part of our trying to demystify careers, uh, which are really off the beaten track. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you to people who joined us. Um, as we go forward in this career track, you will actually find more and more luminaries who will come in and talk to you about careers, uh, various kinds of careers um, you know, in this path. Uh, it's not just about the glamour, it's not just about what you see on the surface, but there are so many sustainable, wonderful careers which you can follow in this vertical uh, that even we were frankly surprised and astounded. Uh, there's a wealth of knowledge coming your way. So come in and dig in. Thank you very much. Back to you, Isha. Thank you. Thank you, Madhura, ma'am. Now, let's just get the agenda clear for today's session. It's going to be a fireside chat between two powerful shadies. It's Megha Tata and Madhura Das Kupasana. Uh, basically, we're going to be discussing about women in the media and creative industries with main focus in broadcasting and advertising. Generally, people don't know what entails in all these industries. There are a lot of misconceptions and thinking that women can't do well in this industry. And we are here to break all the myths today. So without further ado, I'm going to give over to Gurdeen to introduce Megha Ma'am, and then we can just start off with the session. Thank you so much, Isha. Uh, we've been mentioning so much that Megha Ma'am is such a powerful shade. She's so powerful. She's so good at whatever she does. I'm just going to give a very short glimpse into whatever she's achieved so far, just to give, you know, just to make you all aware of who is there in the panel today. So Megha Ma'am joined Discovery Communications India as the managing director on, uh, of the South Asia region on the 1st of April 2019. She has previously held leadership roles at organizations such as BTVI, HBO, Turner International and Star TV. And she has a career that spans over to uh, over 28 years. An industry veteran, she leads multiple national as well as international industry forums and an esteemed member of the National Media and Entertain Entertainment Committee of FIKI. And is also the second woman to ever become the president of the Indian chapter of the International Advertising Association. She has been instrumental in launching several projects for the network in India, including the local launch of the streaming service Discovery Plus, which is now India's largest aggregated real-life infotainment OTT service. Under her leadership, Discovery has forayed into original Indian content, with Discovery Plus launching a slew of exciting originals, including the critically acclaimed Into the Wild with Bear Trills, which has episodes with Rajnikanth, Akshay Kumar, Narendra Modi, as well as Vicky Kaushal, that's going to be up very, very soon. Her knowledge and deep-rooted understanding of the business have aided the network to achieve new heights in the animation genre as well with the Discovery Kids Forum. She, she also has uh, rebranded the Discovery Sports Channel Eurosport in March 2020, and that's a journey that's worth learning. She has been bestowed with multiple industry accolades during her career and is recognized amongst the top 50 influential women in India, marketing and advertising, and was also conferred the Women of the Decade in Media by the Women Economic Forum in 2018. In addition to being uh, very actively involved in industry initiatives, Megha is also energized by engaging uh, with very young minds like the ones that are present in the room today through guest lectures at leading educational institutes, including IIT, IIM, ISP, UBS, and is passionately involved as a volunteer with the Isha Foundation. She's further also a mentor at Aspire for her. So if any of you feel like you want to have a conversation further with her, further with her and learn more from her, you can always apply for the mentorship sessions, the procedure of which you will know about till the end of the session. So I will not take much of your time. We will start off with the session. We'll start off with the Q&A. Uh, Isha, over to you. So we're going to begin with the first question for the session. Before that, I'm just going to mention this again. Mega Ma'am, it's so wonderful to have you. We're all so, so excited. And honestly, it's an honor to have you here today. 
Thank you so much, Isha, Gurleen, Madhura. What a warm, warm welcome. I also suddenly love myself after hearing so many nice things about me. <laughs> so that's really kind introduction and uh, uh, really appreciate being here. And I'm looking forward to see whatever I can share from my journey, which can help the young minds listening in today. Thank you so much. So what we would like to know first is how would you describe your journey of almost three decades in an industry that is so male dominant and has its own share of issues concerning it? Right, Isha. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's been a, quite a hell of a journey for me and um, difficult to put, um, you know, 30 years in three minutes, but I will try try making it as succinct as possible um i come from an air force background my dad was in the air force and uh, we kept moving around so i'm a 4g kid uh moved from one city to the other and i think that's probably where i learned one thing which is that you know change is the only constant and that's something continued to sort of got instilled in me and my sister as a child as kids from my parents um, but when I moved into Mumbai and in, in, I literally came from a small town, I came from Jammu, I was studying there, I finished my, uh, you know, 12th and I came in to get into a graduation in Bombay and like the big bad city hit me right in my face. I'm like, oh my God, where have I come and how do I deal with this? I'm like this small little girl. Uh, from this this small town and I, it, it was just way too much overwhelming pretty much at that stage I realized that you know this is I, I'm confused like most teenagers some of you may have gone through that phase that now what do I do like where do I go from here I think for me the career came to me by chance but the success which I made out of was through hard work so uh, you know there is no shortcut to success as they say and I think one of the things which I learned through this process of, of, of uh, is, I mean, so there are a few things, but I think two or three things, if I were to highlight and the fact that uh, what I really believe very strongly then, and I do believe even now, is to follow your passion. And I think that passion is something which I really feel very strongly. And a lot of care, kids of today sometimes land up taking up jobs because it pays the bill or uh, parents want me to do it or uh, somebody in the peer group is doing it. Chalo, I will also do it. I think the approach is needs to be, do you love it? First of all, do you enjoy what you do? If you happen to get paid for it, double thumbs up. You know, and so follow your passion. And I think that is to me a very critical part of my journey, which I, I you know, over the years learned became even more stronger. Uh, I think the second thing which I, I, I really believe very strongly, again, is prioritization, you know, um, and that especially for women. You know, and a lot of women who are listening in need to be able to understand that how to be able to prioritize their uh, lives. And, and, and the multiple roles they will need to play in, in, their, in their life journey, you know, so as a, at a personal and a professional level. And to a lot, some women call it compromises they make. I prefer to call it prioritization, you know, and that is that you have to take those decisions in your career through the years. What is more important to you? At sometimes you have to let go of a personal um, thing. You may want your heart to be there, but your head says I've got to be at a work uh, thing or um, and vice versa sometimes your family needs to take priority than than work so how do you balance that is is an extremely important part and one of the other critical aspects which i have used again and continue to do today is a positive attitude you know again every life has to be glass half full for you and you've got to see the positive in every challenge and every obstacle that comes through i know easy said than done but then whoever said life is going to be a walk in the park, you know, so it's it's got to be something you've got to find a positive spin in everything. And I, I'm a big believer of that. And, and I know it has played out well in for me. And I do believe that it can play out well for you. So I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> these three key pillars. In fact, I call it colloquially Meghas five P's actually. <laughs> uh, so there's three of these and the two is perception and uh, PR, which is networking. I think those are a very uh, integral part of uh, overall career journey. But these would be my key uh, learnings, which I do believe has played a key role in my success uh, 
in these 30 odd years, which has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for that wonderful answer, Megha, ma'am. Uh, being a 4G kid myself, I definitely, you know, second whatever you said. And I know that we all constantly say the word, uh, say the lines that change is the only constant. And I could not agree more. I so know. the second question that we have for you is, uh, since you've been in the industry for so long, you have firsthand witnessed the change in the content uh, and media space over the years, the way it has evolved and, you know, how it has changed from the uh, initial sales and how it has shifted to digital platform now. So what, according to you, was the biggest change so far? So, you know, I must say that the change I saw in our industry in the last three years was probably the even more than what I saw in the last 30 years, you know? And that is the reality of the industry we are, we are in today. You know, what I really mean is that, you know, I started at a time when there was only one television channel in the country, which was Doordarshan. A lot of you don't even know probably about it because you were not even born then, right? So I'm, I'm talking that long back. In a world, when, when I joined Star, it was literally... Uh, I didn't know at that time that, that, you know, I would be part of history in the making, you know, we, we brought cable and satellite into the country, you know, and that was the first time the world in India, people, people in India got to see uh, the world through the television, you know, and that was a very exciting time. It was new and, a lot, and lots of learning happened in that bargain, in that journey. But what I, what the, in that, phase of growth you know one of the things which which clearly at that stage was being discussed and um, debated was that you know when television la launched they said print will die okay because it's over then radio happened and then they said tv will die then digital happened and they said tv radio and print will die <laughs> nobody dies right all find their own space and co and all have managed a coexistence uh, you know and and their little happy space so in that same, you know, evolution of our industry, what happened in the last two to three years, which was probably going to happen in, in the next five to 10 years has just got shrunk because of the last, you know, because of COVID and the pandemic and we were all at home and the whole consumption pattern on our, in, in our world changed. You guys must have experienced it yourself. So that, that transition from linear to digital has happened very fast. Now, in that, what happens in anything which happens too fast? One, it's overwhelming, right? You just like, oh my God, now what do I do? Where do I begin? How do I start? You know, where, where do you work upon? So I think that was a, a challenge a lot of people were dealing with. And how do you deal with this change, which is happening way too fast? We all were prepared. It's going to happen. But it happened so fast. I don't think so. Everyone, anyone had really thought that through. So in that, what happened is that as an industry, one had to work a balance out, you know, there is a business of today and there is a business of future. So the, how do you sort of balance these two was the critical question. Most of the, uh, most of the industry folks were asking us themselves because, and that's, a, you know, no one really had an answer and it's something everyone has to keep working on to see what's the right way to do it because there is no black book with the rules yeah right? no no one had uh, seen this this kind of no one expected it it's unprecedented when you say it's unprecedented it means it's never happened before so you don't have a reference point right so that was the challenge so what i see now happening is that there in india especially versus say other parts of the world interestingly we are the only market where we are seeing television and digital growth parallelly happening in a lot of markets linear has been pronounced dead not in india i think india television has still room to grow and and the data is proving that and so is uh, digital because we are still a country with large um, uh, you know a huge number of homes which are still don't have televisions at home right so there is an opportunity for tv growth at the, at the same time, there is this uh, huge diaspora in India, which is uh, using content or um, uh, consuming content on mobile phones, <clears throat> not necessarily TV screens. 
So there is a generation which is skipping the large screens and watching the content entirely on the mid, on the mobile. So and the 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 uh, you know Geo has had a great role to play in making data so accessible, right? From a effect cost uh, effectiveness point of view, the ability to use uh, use that data is so much easier. So more smaller towns are consuming data and consuming content. So that is the evolution you. Uh, we have seen uh, is that how the content consumption is moving from linear to digital but at the same time there are audiences adding to the linear which is why the balancing continues to be there in india and that's that's where the excitement is but that's where the anxiousness is as well how do you make those both the sides of the business uh, coexist right i think that was very well put so um we're going to uh, we're going to ask this next question to madhura ma'am so um working with afs we've all been working with a lot of issues pertaining to women and uh, media is one such industry that is definitely underrepresented uh, underrepresented by women so what do you think are the causes behind what are the reasons behind that and where does it exactly stem from Thank you, Gurleen. Uh, perhaps I'm not the right person to answer this question, but uh, I'll try to answer it. Uh, so at AFH, when we actually started looking at various career tracks, we realized that uh, you know there are some tracks which uh, women, uh, which are more popular with women, and there are some tracks which aren't. Uh, and of course, like you rightly pointed out, this is one of the tracks which uh, needs a lot more women. Uh, the reason why it needs a lot more women is obvious because half the world's population is women. They are the ones who are consumers of the content. Um, and it's so easy to become a content creator. It's so easy to be on the other side also now that it's a shame that there are not, uh, not enough women in the industry today. But why are there not enough women? And I think, uh, you know, we were alluding to this conversation a few minutes back before we started off. Uh, there are lots of perceptions uh, about this entire vertical. And, uh, you know, I'm deliberately adding a broad brush to all of the verticals put together, uh, whether it's the element of long hours, uh, lots of travel, hard work, uh, okay, sleeping on the floors, uh, you know, and, you know, starting when you actually start from the bottom of the rung, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not perceived to be a very easy journey. And as a result of that, perhaps many women, uh, you know, when they start off uh, in a few years, uh, they, they want to get married and they want to get children after that, it does become uh, a sort of a, a misconception in their minds to say that, you know, I'm not going to be able to uh, strike that uh, the balance, that elusive balance, and I'm not going to be able to do this. So that's perhaps one of the reasons why we don't see enough women in the industry. We don't see enough women definitely in positions, uh, uh, you know, like Megha. And that's the reason why we keep doing these sorts of sessions. We keep bringing in mentors and role models like Megha because we want to demystify that the path is not as difficult as you think it is. And uh, we feel very strongly if she can see it, she can be it. I think this is what the Gina Davis Institute also says. And uh, that's what we have been doing for every vertical. And we'd love to do more of it with this vertical, which I'm hoping Gurleen, Isha, all of you will continue de-layering this and demystifying this and, and getting us more and more um, you know, interesting people, more role models to come and talk, uh, more learning opportunities, and actually ensuring that uh, you know, it becomes, uh, uh, you know, a chapter of that book uh, that people read much more of, discover it, and then go to dip their toes into this ocean. So this becomes a very attractive uh, sort of a path for women to follow. I'm hoping that we're going to achieve that. Can I just add here, uh, <clears throat> Madhura? Yes. I think uh, I, I'd like to say that, you know, in these 30 years, I have seen actually a lot more women come into the industry. From when I started to where we are today, there are far more women in the media and entertainment industry, to be honest. The problem is, you're absolutely rightly pointed out, somewhere down the line, and generally I say down up the line, they disappear. Yes. So the CXO level women are handful. You can literally count them in one hand, you right. know. And that is a larger question. And it, that's not just true to our industry. That's just industry agnostic issue of right. how lesser women are at CXO level. But 
many more there, the workforce of uh, in media and interest in media and uh, entertainment and advertising is very women skewed it's and it's a strong position so it's a good good place to good be place in place to be in the, the misconception is the roles expected like i think we started when you also mentioned like you know you were in a boring job you know it is just an assumption that media is a very glamorous job right. it is not you know the the that is where i'd like to highlight to the to the group listening in i don't know what is the definition when people think of television and broadcasting and advertising there are multiple verticals within this industry what you see is not only what the product is all about or the proposition is or what the opportunity is tv screen tells you that's one profession that's acting right. that is one of the hundreds of possibilities are working in an yes. industry yes so if you're not acting is one okay that's that's the glamour part so to speak but there is so much more in there is production there is marketing there is sales there is distribution there is um, uh, what we call broadcast operations there is a called uh, uh, there is hr functions there are finance functions there are uh you know there are so many other support functions there is business operations careers can be made in the entire ecosystem why the why is there this belief that program um, uh, uh, television media broadcasting matlab it's it's maybe only about say i don't even know what they think frankly i don't even know what the thinking is in in most of the young professionals mind so my point here i'm making is there are multiple forums uh, multiple um, opportunities within the art industry where you can make a career and it doesn't have to be just about uh, um, you know acting or or production or direction or uh, all that is there but there is so much more to offer like i said i my growth has been on sales i did advertising sales and i didn't know a of advertising when i walked into it i learned it's okay and just to put the put it on record i'm just a pure plain graduate and i just about passed <laughs> let me also say this i was academically pathetic i hated to study i didn't want to study i was bad at studies i have failed in subjects and today i am in a position i'm hiring people from iim right so the point i'm trying to make academics is not the only thing and be all and end all of the world right i mean it's important but it's not like theek hai fine what i what i learned is through my experience and my passion and i loved what i did and i learned everything i was willing i said chalo aane do you know and that to me was what has made me where i am today not my whatever the grades i i graduated with but sales was my bedrock of learning now you would think sales advert what is advertising sales exactly nobody knows what that is yes what is advertising sales that is the biggest function in a in a in a television organization broadcasting because that's a revenue function yes and a revenue function is a very critical function in any organization so you you can you can make i made my career out of it i know of so many of my colleagues who made careers out of being in sales or in distribution sales very few women in affiliate distribution sales something i it just irritates me because perception is that you have to meet these kind of people who where women are and women should not be going who made these rules who made these rules i'm saying come i have a fabulous Uh, per, in my organization, a, a really kick-ass woman who leads one of my uh, distribution functions, and she's done it based on just she was brilliant, not because she was a male woman. It didn't matter gender; she just happened to be a woman. So I'm just saying that the 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 thinking or the perception people have of the career options in media and advertising is very limited. Right, and I'm hoping forums like this gives them. a better understanding of it 
sorry i i amazing sorry, I like an amazing answer mega you know i just i took away two really big things from here and i i, I know gurli you you are you are you want to say something but i am so happy with this answer that i have to say this so mega had talked about starting from production to marketing to sales to distribution i was taking notes to broadcast to operations to hr to finance to legal to business operations there are at least uh, you know 15 odd sort of verticals that you mentioned which people do not think of when they are talking about television broadcasting and careers which are pertaining to this so i think that is the biggest one thing to take away please do not limit your imagination and do not think that if you're an engineering student oh this is not for me or exactly exactly so absolutely so, totally i mean the so engineering students are most needed in broadcast operations that is how how do you think you watch this tele show on your home where is it coming from it has to go through the satellite who understands satellite the technical team is the one who brings and that's something i'm very proud of to be part of this industry not even for one day through the lockdown any television channel shut think about it think about it everyone was locked at home yes it's not magic the tv is getting the content is getting ingested somewhere it is getting uplinked through uh, somewhere is getting downlinked from the satellite going through the uh, cable operator system then coming to your home how is that happening who does that there are people right there are heads there are human bodies who do that and such few women in there such few women why because it's it, this is this is where the challenge is yes. like if you think if it's media means it's it, it, just like in earlier days i my, my my mother used to tell me that people wanted to go into films they would say are wo to she's from a bad family that's why she wants to do films so at some point in my life also in my earlier days with television oh that's that's not a good career it's because the perception is this tv ya media ya films means acting Yes. There's far more to this this industry or this business or this this vertical or industry actually has to offer than what meets the eye. Yes. And if there's one thing that all of you take away from this conversation, uh, then I think it is this. And the second thing is what Megha talked about: academics and careers, uh, academics and careers. I would put it that way. If you have passion, your grades really do not matter. And there is I am so the young- live example of that. Like seriously, I have been rejected by cert- one one. Uh, uh, you know, I won't name the institute. <laughs> <laughs> I was rejected when I was initially struggling and didn't know what to do. And did I said, "Chalo, let me do my MBA and apply and all of that." I very reluctantly, I did it. Got rejected. Today, I'm hiring people from that institute. <laughs> so life you make your life guys really life should not make you i'm seeing a lot of love flowing through for that <laughs> comment here on the chat box khushit thank you for that comment back to you gurleen sorry we hijacked your sorry comment. sorry 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 <laughs> no it's completely all right you've given us so much to think about honestly after this just one question this all of us are going to think about this after the session as well We're going to move forward to the next question, which is to Megha, ma'am. Uh, generally, people, as you said, don't know about careers. So this broadcasting, advertising, sales, and of obviously there are various processes that go into it. So we talk about distribution of audio and video content. What is the distribution process in India? Is it similar to what's prevalent in other countries? And if not, can we adopt from other nations to make the industry progress further? the overall industry dynamics are the same world over and india is one of you know has one of the world class uh, technology propositions and the ecosystem to provide that content which comes to your homes um, in fact even when we look at some of the ott plays which to like for example so, so let me give you one perspective do you know how many television channels are there in our country today 900 how many do you watch 2 3 4 max 5 right how many ott player, players are there today 
hundred plus. I'm just my guessing. last count was forty, forty-five. Okay. OTT already. I mean, it's not been a big year or two okay. since since okay. OTT came. How many would you be watching? Two, three, four max, right? So the problem with the overall system is that there's consumer is not not a problem. It's problem for the business, but not for the consumer because consumer is spoiled for choice, right? They have enough and more offering. the The problem in the industry was that the the way it 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 got structured, right? And 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 I don't want to get into that because that is digress the the discussion. It became that the content was coming um, for a very cheap price to the consumer at home, while globally people were paying for content. so the whole ecosystem started depending on revenue coming from advertising and distribution sales while in other parts of the world people were paying for content so they they were already used to paying for content now cut to the scenario 2 where the ott is saying that you got to pay me to watch the content which is great for the industry but the to get 30 years of mindset to change is not going to happen overnight if you're sitting and saying i was watching 500 channels are coming in i may watch three or four but i know 500 channels are coming into my television and i'm paying 250 300 bucks a month to my cable operator right today i'm saying netflix tells you you have to pay me 800 buck or whatever 800 bucks a month you say okay that's crazy now discovery plus says pay 399 a year for me okay not bad that's an easy one disney says something prime says something you will make choices right at some point you will make choices like okay this is what i will pay for and this i will let go that is what is going to happen then that is where the choices and that's where the pricing and the proposition of the products which come will play a role in in a consumer's minds to what what i want to watch at what cost and hence the the tv ecosystem will have its challenges the ott ecosystem will have a challenge because ott is not very advertising uh, driven right now it's more an s word business which is uh, so s word standing for subscriber video on demand versus a word which is advertising video on demand only few platforms are driving through advertising but that again is very it's like content driven like you you know um, it, it's it, there is a limitation of that and like i said i'm i'll get i'll digress on that front that's a different conversation but the so the when you compare to india versus global uh, we are at a level playing field when it comes to what you know from a product proposition um a point of view but where we are not level playing field is the pricing because india is a very low arpu market arpu being average uh, rate per user and that is very low in our country just to give you a comparison on an average the price of a subscriber in say a us would be in the range of 8 to 10 dollars here is less than a dollar so the difference is so vast but the cost of production cost of running a business cost of people all that remains so that is where the challenge is at an industry level to manage this i think that was very wonderfully put and i think it was very insightful for us as well to just understand the kind of differences that are there in the different industries that are there over the across the seas so the another question that we have is actually open for the both of you so um like you mentioned that a lot of misconceptions that you know uh, regarding the industry stem from the the way it's portrayed whether it's through the media or the mindset of the individual so there are a lot of uh, companies that have been making you know they they've been trying to make a certain change when it comes to that so we recently saw the cadbury ad that had a very different shift and you know so could you talk to us about could you mention about a few of such uh, you know uh, media pieces that you feel like have made an impact in that manner Madhura, you want to go first? I'll talk about it uh, as a consumer to start with. I think uh, so. Uh, 
and and I mean, I learned a lot about this whole concept of uh, you know, how, how, like you mentioned the the video on demand sort of thing because OTT is something that I consume personally a lot of. Uh, you know, uh, what I've been loving about, uh, and I'm not only talking about India here because sitting in India, I can consume content from so many different countries today. I was not able to do that earlier. I'm able to do that thanks to all the platforms that are there. Um, what I love is uh, that many boundaries have actually broken down for us now. Um, there was a point in time just a few years back when all that, you know, Indian media would uh, glorify, would glamorize, would be a very traditional woman. And I'm talking about the, the obviously the, the, the way women are portrayed, a very, very traditional woman who was upholding more and more traditional views. In fact, there was a point in time when I as a consumer started thinking that have we, have we uh, sort of regressed uh, from the time when I was young, uh, when we had you know, wonderful content like a, you know, Buniyad and like many, many contents which were very, very uh, forward looking at, at some points in time. There were pockets of really forward looking uh, you know, content. And that sort of somehow, you know, degraded into something where we were, we were glorifying only traditions, only women, you know, women's places in the kitchen, and that's the best place to be sort of thing. Uh, so I was very getting very disappointed with that. Suddenly, my world has opened up. Um, I love the fact that Netflix has this, uh, you know, prompt that it gives me. Uh, for seeing more, uh, uh, you know, content where, where women uh, are in strong characters. I love the fact that women and strong and characters, these three words go together in, in something which is almost like a, a ready-made sort of a prompt, which is for me, I'm sure for many of you as well. Um, and I love the fact that that's happened now. So uh, Cadbury's ad is just, a, a, I would say, a glimpse of changing times uh, and how advertisers are also wanting us to look at women. But we also have to remember that advertisers uh, who are thinking like that are a very small sliver uh, in our entire ecosystem. So we'd love to have more of them, definitely. And we'd love to have the Indian OTT content providers. And this is really our uh, demand to you, Megha, uh, that the Indian OTT content providers also should have, like Netflix, you know, women, because you liked watching this, so you will like watching more uh, uh, content with women in strong characters. So we'd love to see more of that. So, so thank you for the question, Gurleen, but uh, Megha, you're the expert on this. Yeah, no, no, that's that's a uh, it's a great uh, answer, and 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 that's the, this this ad obviously created a lot of uh, excitement and conversations, and but I have a little a different view to this actually. Um, you know, the the what you and I are saying is like you know it's good to see the change happening is of the generation you and I represent, okay. But when I ask the same question to my daughter. Right. So my older daughter is about 23 and my younger one's about 19. And they said, yeah, it's nice. Like, what's a big deal? Right. Like, what's a big deal about, you know, this boy is dancing because she's playing cricket. So what? I, that's fine. But that's how we hang out. That's that's pretty cool. So the fundamental thing that I'm trying to highlight is we are seeing the change because we have been in a in a, in a generation or in a time where it wasn't so easy and wasn't really, you know, women's achievement wasn't so appreciated. But this generation, which is fantastic, thinks it's pretty normal. And I think to me, that is the real change. The real change is that today's generation is finding a Cadbury's ad, a good ad, but not an ad which is changing. Yeah. And to me, that is a big win as, as, an, as a country, as a, as a gender, that women of today are feeling that it's, it's cool. And maybe it's a very metro phenomena, I must add here. Maybe the tier two, three cities and further down have their own set of challenges. And I'm not saying that we have reached anywhere close to saying, okay, now we are done, let's shut shop. Absolutely not, long, long way to go. But I think these are positive signs. This is something I'm an eternal optimist, a glass half full positive person. So for me, this was a good takeaway that, yes, uh, you and I are finding the change. Fantastic. But the generation of today are seeing like, OK, this is a nice ad, but what's a big deal? Like, it's OK. You know, 
<laughs> women play cricket, women play football, and there are so many women. My younger daughter, who used to be a sports person, she said she'd name some 20 people saying, okay, these are all women who are big sports successes, so what's the big deal, you know? <laughs> So, so just, just a perspective. But having said that, I think, yes, we need more content to, um, in every which way, creative, whether it's advertising or films or um, television content, completely agree with you of the regression of uh, the last couple of decades where the content was really bizarre and it was a chicken and egg, uh, you know, in fact, just mentioning that there are a few channels who tried to be progressive, okay, and tried to put in content which is progressive and nobody watched it. So the more regressive the content, people love to watch it. Now, who do you blame this to, right? You can say society mirrors uh, people. Some can say people mirror society. Who jury is out there? As a business head, I need to run my shop, right? True. I need to make where the money is. But if I'm making the effort to put content and then you're not watching, but then I put regressive content, you are like, like chumbak to it. it up. <laughs> so then what do you want me to do? True. So easier to make those uh, comments sitting on the outside, but the realities have to be also, be, you know, borne out. And th that's the fact as well. Have, but that I think is changing. OTT has created that platform of uh, progressive content. Uh, I think, and that is the beauty about this country. You know, I have always said there are many Indias within India, right? And it is, it is such a diverse country with so many languages, cultures, color, caste, the works, right? And this is the only country possibly where you, you, you know, you can, you exist in multiple centuries at the same time. True. You are still talking about child marriage in one place to gay marriages in the other place. Which country does that? Right? So, so that is the that is the challenge of this country and the excitement as well. So you have to appeal. Your content needs to appeal to multiple people. Unlike US, Europe, where language is same, yes. look they all look the same. They eat the same. Much more easier to appeal to one content idea which cuts across the whole country. Our country cannot do that. So we have to create those things that there's got to be something for everyone. So you may like some, you may dislike some, but there is an audience who likes some, what you may dislike, right? So you have to balance that. that uh, that's something I thought I'll, I'll table as well. True, and these are realities of life, right? I mean, uh, commercial realities uh, cannot be wished away under any circumstances. <laughs> There are some lovely questions here, in fact, from Lakshmi and maybe Kulleen, Vesha, you can take it once you're ready. Yeah. Uh, taking the conversation forward, uh, Mega Ma'am, it's, it's no, I could say, it's very common thing to say that people just form their misconceptions about what women can do and what women can't do. They easily take decisions and just say it out loud. But one of the most, I could say, what I've heard is women don't do well in media industries. Probably, as you might you mentioned before, it might be, you know, you have to meet certain people or it might be the late nights or you have to go somewhere. So what do you think people people's reasoning might be to think of such things? And what would you say to them? Like, what did you do? How did you get here? What would you give them suggestions and pointers so that they can you know, break free from this and do what they want to do. As you said, follow their passion. Yeah, yeah. I think besides having the passion and belief in yourself and the gumption to, you know, take in, I think you've got to have thick skin. You've got to not get affected with what happens and what people speak and all of that, because that's uh, the, and to me, that is, uh, you know, I'll, re I'll, I'll, I'll sort of rephrase that question. It's not necessarily only about media industry. I think it's about women in any industry. Yeah, you have to deal with shit in men, at men, many levels, but it's up to you now. See, I have always said one thing. Every woman has a choice, right? If women have told me that I, I didn't do this because I didn't have a choice, I am sorry, I don't agree. You always have a choice. You decide to choose a different path is your choice. I, I respect women who have 
taken a choice of not taking a career, sitting at home and all that, but are happy. I respect them. It's not, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I think being a homemaker is the toughest bloody job and a thankless one too. And you don't even get paid for it. <laughs> so that's nothing wrong with that. But I, I'm sorry, I don't relate to women who had a choice, but chose for whatever pressures they went through, right? And, and then crib about it all your life. I could have been, I would have been, had I been, if I had, what, ta, ta, ta. Like those are the, you made that choice, yeah. So like in, I always say that all through my life, I took decisions. Some I regretted, some I didn't. But where I, where I regretted, I didn't blame it on anybody. It was my decision. But when I had a success, I didn't give credit to anybody. It was my decision. Right? So you take onus of your life, guys. You've got to take responsibility and accountability. Don't blame it on husband, mother, mother-in-law, child. BS. I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am a daughter-in-law, I am a friend, I am a professional, I am a sister, I am a sister-in-law. I wear all those hats. Am I good at everything? Absolutely not. Of course I will compromise. Of course I will, um, sorry, not compromise, prioritize. Of course I will not be perfect. I am a human being. So I will lose some, I will gain some, but I, am, I gave it my best at my terms. And this is not trying to be a feminist, guys. This is not about saying burn your bras. Okay. This is not about saying I don't care. I don't care about men. Absolutely not. I love men. No, that's not a wrong. That's a wrong statement. <laughs> that's not politically correct. I, I, I mean, I think men are very important in the ecosystem, right? We, we all need men in our lives in different roles they play. You know, husband, boyfriend, brother, father, father-in-law, whatever. It's important to coexist, but it doesn't mean that you have, like you've made those choices. You decided to do something because somebody else wanted you to do that. I'm sorry. It's not something I can relate to. Uh, I, I, I am not, I didn't come entitled. I worked my heart, my way up. I told you I came from a small town, from a foggy background, limited means. I reached a certain stage because I lived it at my terms. And though sometimes it was hard decisions, I, I dealt with a lot of shit, you know, of course. So for that, I will say, Isha, you got to tell them to have a thick skin, you know, don't get too waylaid about what people have to say and don't get, don't get too, uh, too boggled into this, this nonsense. Believe in yourself, be, con, con, be a conscientious worker, you know, be, be true to yourself. You know, be clear in what you want. Don't get waylaid by people and their opinions. I know it's e not easy. It's your human being. You do get affected. I am not saying that for a minute. But then you've got to be mentally strong. You have to be strong here. And for that, I must say, if you guys can add a certain, a, a spiritual path in your life, in the beginning of your journey versus thinking that it is for my parents and my grandparents and my when I retire, I do that. I used to think that too. You trust me, you guys will benefit. Some form of alternative balancing of your life. And you don't have to become like a hermit or something. I, I drink, I party, I do everything. But I do follow a, a, a path which makes me balanced. And if you at your age can do that, trust me, guys, you will have such a strong mental state which will only help you grow physically, uh, I mean, professionally and personally. So that is something I, I highly, highly recommend to everybody. This is gender agnostic, men and women for that matter. That was sure uh, Madhya, Madhya, said. Have something to add in to that. What a, what a beautiful comment, you know. And um, I think it is communities like this that help us often discover these paths because we don't get to have conversations like this in our normal daily lives, in our busy lives. And uh, uh, what we are trying to do here also is to give a safe space for people to come in and talk and just share their views. And you know, what, a, what a valuable little gem of advice that, uh, that Megha actually leaves us with here. 
uh, and it is just what 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 we will encourage you always to do is to be part of a community be part of a community which is together cheering you on which is also giving you insights which is trying to also find creative solutions to problems that you're facing cool. so so thank you thank you for that gem maker we have lakshmi lingam here and she is the dean of uh, the tis school for media and cultural studies so very honored to have you ma'am uh, and uh, you know we we'd love to actually get your question from yourself so uh, you know mulin if you can pin her here uh, let lakshmi ma'am actually ask the question herself it's a fantastic question and i am also eagerly looking forward to the answer from megha yeah thanks good evening and i've been following the uh, conversations very intently and i've been enjoying it uh, you know when you alluded to the cadbury chocolate uh, advertisement i was just wondering you know things don't seem to be so easy uh, whenever any kind of uh, gender equal or even secular messages are being put out uh, you know we do see what kind of backlash it's creating and whether it's a majority in mean, it's a majority in view but whether it's really a majority view is always a question but they do put out this point that hurting Uh, religious sentiments and that is enough for a lot of organizations and agencies to retract and actually not stand up and you know say something you know once they don't stand up you actually find the broader messages that goes out is you know gender equal and secular messages are not for india and that's a scary kind of situation i really wondered how would all of you and you know megha and uh, madhura who all are part of this Uh, industry actually respond to these questions that we are all actually grappling with thank you thank you ma'am um, you know i uh, this is one topic which is very close to my heart and i i do believe that uh, i think brands and any any communicate creative community can play a very integral role in changing the overall thinking of our uh, uh, you know uh, the, the entire ecosystem at large um uh, i won't name the product but i think one of the products uh, which in a way has a large um uh, should i say the reason why today a lot of women think that unless i'm fair i won't be successful yeah and and how did that happen over years of sending that message back and back back and back back and back that only when you are fair you will be successful only if you are fair you will get a bridegroom only if you are this and the moment you are dark skinned you are shown as a loser how did this happen it happened over years of sending that message again and again and these things are ingrained in our society unfortunately and i believe very strongly the creative community of our country can play a very critical role in changing that mindset and it's not going to happen overnight but to your point ma'am if you if you make a commitment of making a strong stand then live with it don't backtrack it you know and because today's world is a brutal world we are living in a world of trolls and that world everyone and every we are 1 billion people that means 1 billion views that means 1 billion comments that means one possible 1 billion possibilities of trolls so what does that mean you will not speak up you won't do what the right thing is i think that is an important brands uh brands in our organization uh, in our in our country need to and our companies and corporates need to have that strong so some people have taken it and stuck to it and not retracted but some have now i am nobody to comment on their business strategies and their you know creative strategies i i i respect i mean that's their call as a as a media professional as a consumer myself i think we should be either don't go down that path if you've gone then you stick to it then don't then don't retract i don't know uh, madhura what's your view on this no oh, i'm absolutely the same i think it resonates with something else that you said earlier as well that if you've taken the decision uh, i would i would like to sort of stick to it 
good and and good bad ugly you either you win some you learn from some uh, but stick to it is what 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 i would think uh, is is the right thing to do but yes i mean there are realities and there are realities ma'am we all know uh, that sometimes things can be tough so therefore companies may have been forced compelled under certain circumstances also to take calls which are not always what no respect they would not be respected for those calls that's what it that too thank you so much for the wonderful answer um isha can we have the next question yeah we have a question from the audience uh his name is vikant he is a journalism student his question is recently asci advertising standard council of india is about to bring some guidelines to improve the fair and inclusive portrayal of women megawan wants to know your opinion how much helpful can the guidelines be and should there be any other steps taken or not yeah i i've seen that report it's a fantastic report done by aski uh, um you know uh, of course i did the first one uh, but aski's done uh, has followed it up and it's a really good report um and i think they are putting the set of guidelines together to 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 drive uh, uh, to work with various creative community on how um the portrayal of women and stereotyping of women should be should be done um i don't i'm not an ascii person so i wouldn't be the right person to comment on that but fundamentally i do believe that it is important for bodies like ascii iaa or generally anybody who who really care for the industry and have a uh, the power of their voice which can make a difference to go and talk to the creative community at large um to say that you know be conscious you know be conscious when you're putting an ad where you have two kids a boy and a girl you don't have to make make it show that the boy is playing with planes and the girl is playing with dolls yeah you don't have to show in a creative where a woman is sitting in the kitchen and the man is sitting and watching tv yeah you don't have to show uh, that a woman is uh, uh, un- doesn't understand finance and she's always looking up to a man to to give her direction yeah or, or you or you don't have to you you can show a man sitting and cooking something for his wife while the wife sitting and having chai and reading a paper you can show a man sitting going into the bathroom and putting some clothes in the washing machine you can show a man going out and picking up their kids from school these are simple things it doesn't take away the creativity your messaging doesn't have to be changed it's just the way you put it right so that can come only if at a intrinsic level there is a belief by the in the creative community this is important it is important for us it is important for our uh, our our society uh, and important for our or uh, this and the next generation and at large that this is the this is how women and men need to be portrayed you know why is it that they never show men are crying you think men don't cry why is it that it's always women who shown as this weak woman why because it's a mindset it's a creatively we've ingrained this over the years and that's how it's become like i gave you mention about the fair skin and dark skin uh, stuff so i think it is important um, and i do hope uh, you know organizations like askii and many others per se are able to make a difference in our society thank you so much ma'am so we have one question from rashmi lamba ma'am who's also one of the mentors at afh and you will see her in one of the upcoming sessions as well so she wanted you to talk a little bit about your gender representation campaign that you started yeah i mean well uh, you know this was a campaign i mean i did, did with the uh, gdi which is the gina davis institute of research uh, it's a uh, in the it's a research institute based out of the us um, which was started by the you may have seen uh, uh, the hollywood uh, leading actress gina davis we partnered with them and uh, unicef uh, which uh, we 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 wanted to evaluate what is the kind of representation of women um in the advertising uh, which has happened uh, i think the the time period was we took it in 2019 i think yeah and um, so that research brought out some uh, unfortunate findings that you know life hasn't changed too much uh, from what it was earlier and i think that was a uh, uh, tad bit disappointing there are certain certain things have improved but a lot needs to be done and then we created this campaign about that how there is a need to address this change uh, in our in the way women are stereotypically 
put up out there in any form of creative community in, in any form of creativity and uh, so it's it's early steps and we're working on seeing how we can uh, engage with the agencies clients and see whether they understand you know like i was mentioning you know just giving them a guideline a framework you can't make this into a law but at least you can give a framework that okay this is broadly how you can think and it doesn't have to take away from your creativity so let's see early early days but all of us can make a difference i think each one of you can make a difference you are part of a generation which can make a difference like if you do get into a creative community creative careers make sure that you think that make sure that you can make a difference in in rep, how women are represented how men are represented um, and i think all of us can play a role in that thank you thank you for that uh, we're going to take the last two questions for the day the first one being from shagun she would like to ask about the skills that one must work on consciously trying to build a career in the media and advertising industry especially if we're talking about branding and other strategic roles um see like i told you there are multiple options in in a career uh, career options in media and entertainment so you've got to first figure like what's your like where's your mojo yeah so so if i tell you in sales this is what you can do but you're not a sales person then i'm like then i'm trying to put a you know square peg into a round hole right it it won't work so you've got to figure where's your where's your like where do you think is your heart at and then you work on on uh, on um, sort of you know i can help you guide you on where what are the kind of things you can do uh, and that's where platforms like aspire for her can you know be the moderator to help connect the dots with the right people for you uh, but you've got to be able to understand have a basic understanding at least that what do you want to do right some you you maybe want to be a creator creative person a copywriter production editor marketer um, sales i don't know like i said there are so many other options right so you've got to get a basic sense of what you want to do and then then one can guide you and sort of uh, you know help you in 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 navigating that uh, in your career and this is such a fantastic opportunity uh, that you know you can actually reach out to mentors uh, uh, megha and mentors like her to actually figure out where your skills lie where your passion lies and this is an opportunity which when we were young uh, frankly speaking uh, you know we did not really have the luxury of doing that so i think uh, it's incredibly lucky that uh, some of you who are, who have had taken up the time to listen to her actually have opened up this door as well uh, to just perhaps figure out your passion and ignite it thank you so much so we have one question from sumit that says uh, the i for the opportunity should be there truly said but what about the further families or peer pressures as today's generation look for a support first before or after getting before or after making a decision is that for me i think let's keep it open for both of you uh can, sorry what was the question the, i didn't get peer it. pressure the peer pressure bit so i can actually maybe i can address can it take that. and yeah so um you know when we were young uh, uh, sumit uh, there was this whole thing about either you become an engineer or a doctor uh, it's not so much that uh, there was parental pressure but there was actually peer pressure because everybody in my class felt that if you didn't uh, get into one of these two professions uh, then your life uh, just you know wasn't wasn't really that great and um, you know it's only much later that i also realized that uh, the world has so many different options um and uh, you know and today especially our generation uh, your generation has so many different uh, you know career paths that you can actually look at uh, which is why what we try to do at aspire for her uh, is to actually shine the spotlight on many such career paths uh, which are uh, just very very off the beaten track so uh, my my submission to you is uh, that that it is it is information like this it is showing the spotlight on various career options which will also make your parents and your peers appreciate the fact uh, that today the world is not black and white anymore 
Uh, there are so many different uh, colorful options uh, that you can look at and you should find your passion and you should move in there. Um, in fact, some of the conversations at Aspire for Her that we've had have uh, also woken me up in the sense that there were some people who came in and said, oh, this is the career that we want. And, you know, they had rose tinted glasses about that career option and said that we are in love with this career option. And we've, we fi finally, after doing some conversations, after doing a couple of mock internships, they realized that it was not a career option for them. So uh, my, our, my only submission is, uh, please do not give in to peer pressure. Please do not give in to pressure that uh, you know, others in your family are talking about, uh, but find out for yourself, but keep finding out uh, as to whether it is a job which you like living with day in and day out. Uh, and today there are multiple careers that you can look at, not necessarily only one. I think this generation is blessed that way, uh, that there are, side hustles there are passion projects and there is that one career that you also can follow and that can keep on changing so live like that um and and that's that's the thought that i will leave you with so mega over to you no i think that's fantastic i'll just add this to me that um you know there was there was a time where there were limited career options today there are to, to madhura's point the off the beaten track one of the crazy career option which has come up in the last couple of years is social media influencers like they make more money than all of us put together in this room right now i can tell you that and all they do is post videos right they make content they post it and and that they're making i'm i was amazed there are kids in the age group of five and seven who are making more money than any of the mba students who may get it'll take them probably you know I don't know, three, five years till they get the kind of money they make by putting one post from their platform. Crazy. I mean, they're, they're kids. Their parents have given up their careers to manage their kids. It's bizarre. So I have my, my daughter's friends who are like major influencers and, and they were like little bachas with me in school. And I'm like, What? you're making so much money and you're not even 19 like what are you guys doing so there's a good the bad is of course then you get all messed up as well so you've got to balance that out so uh, all i'm saying is that quintessential career de definition is gone out of the window and you've got to make that choice you have a buffet of careers in front of you for us it was a limited offering it's like a it's like a wedding feast, man. There are hajar counters. You can pick your own khana and enjoy and relish. So, so just create that. Be sure what you want. And which is where, if, you know, highlighting what Madhura said and I began with passion. Be happy. Enjoy what you do. Love what you do. Get up every day. Say, yes, today I'm going to do this. And then everything else follows. It's All these are byproducts of fame fortune money all that jazz is is just don't get too boggled into that space thank you so much for the wonderful answer so we'll take just one last question i know we've gone a lot over time but we'll just take this one last question from chitra ma'am uh it is for megha ma'am and she wants to ask what is your secret sauce for managing so much in 24 hours hey chits i'll talk to you separately about it <laughs> But um, yeah, so I think um, I, I do, I sort of alluded to this in one of the questions was that, of course, it came much later in my life, but uh, the path of spirituality, which I follow, you know, I think that really was the game changer for me as an individual and, and how my life sort of suddenly became wonderful again, you know, I just felt like I was going through a stage in my life like there was so much happening work pressure home whatever I was trying to balance all that but when when I started this path I just just sort of I got like this new lease of life so um, I think mental stability is an extreme important requirement to keep the balance in your physical world as well so how I managed to do this is really keep that uh, calm in my mind. Try to be calm. Of course, I lose my cool at some points, and uh, but but that's I guess normal. I am I am not a a, a guru yet, <laughs> uh, 
but uh, i do follow a guru and i think that uh, that's helped me uh, anchor myself i think you know i believe a guru is a great anchor to have sort of who keeps you grounded and if you do have a guru in your life and could be anybody could be your teacher your parent a spiritual guru uh, or a friend anyone who can sort of anchor you you know when somebody who can make you understand that all this is transitional you know there's far more to life and that is important uh, to be to to look in words you know versus looking for external uh, solace i think the solace you can actually seek internally is far more rewarding than looking for that solace externally like my guru says which uh, sadguru i follow sadguru and he says in is the only way out and i think that to me is a, a very profound statement i completely believe in so chits i don't know if i answered that question for you <laughs> totally mega thank you for that i mean it's, uh, it's amazing because uh, what you said about anchoring and mental stability uh, is something that is uh, so important and and something that we ignore all the time i'm sorry i'm not uh, my my network is a bit spotty so i'm not uh, putting the video on apologies for that um but uh, and that's something that we don't look into at all it is uh, uh, a lot of times i mean i can only speak for myself it feels mm. also you know fly off the handle but that's not going to get me anywhere else, right it's not going to get me anywhere um yeah stability and anchoring and uh, and calmness you spoke Correct. about yeah. um which is uh, which is fabulous thank you i mean that was that's i'm going to use this secret sauce <laughs> awesome. wake up in the morning wake up in the morning and say mental stability but yeah it will come it to be okay yeah thank you that was thank you thank you that was the end of all the questions that we had today thank you so much thank you mega ma for coming thank today thank you ladies it was wonderful chatting thank with you all so of much. you thank you thank you really uh, talking to you listening to you has been amazing so much to think about i request everyone to please fill out the feedback poll that you can see on your screens right now we would understand your expectations how you liked it and what we can do better the next time thank you madhura ma'am as well for joining the chat today and giving so many insights thank you to the team for working so hard and making this event a great success thank you to our mentors mega ma'am rashmi ma'am chitra ma'am who are here today and the rest of them who couldn't make it as well also thank you for the audience for being such a wonderful one for posting so many questions for being so patient with every with all of us it's been truly an honor to conduct this session today to be a part of it and to also sign off we have wonderful sessions lined up as well coming next week onwards i request all of you to please register the registration link would be put up in the chat box now also if anyone wishes to have a mentorship session with neena tata all, along with the rest of the mentors it is on the available on our platform you can just put down an email at mentoring@readaspireforher.org and we will get in touch with you once again thank you so much it's been a wonderful session we've gone over time yeah. like almost by 23 minutes which is a testament to how wonderful the discussion was thank you Thank, thank you, you guys thank thanks you everyone thank you thank take you care so thank you so much nice conversation thank you mega thanks madhura thanks so much talk to you soon okay bye thank you bye thank you everybody bye, bye.